Mary and today I'm filming my May wrap up. So, um, again, I feel like it was a good reading month for me. I noticed that I, that I tend to read a lot in the first half of the month and then I slow down for some reason. I, I have no idea, but um, let's talk about the books that I've read. I'm not talking about them in any particular order just because, I don't know, I feel like being random as it is. Um, so we've got uh, Dealing with Dragons and Searching for Dragons by Patricia Re um, Reed. These are the first two books in a um, quartet that's called the um, Enchanted For Forest Chronicles. There's a bit of a glare there. Um, and this is a middle grade series. I thought it was YA and actually it's not clear whether it's actually, you know, YA, middle grade, maybe something in between. But to me, it reads more like a middle grade book. And um, it, we follow Simmerin, I hope that's how you pronounce her name, that is a, a quite, quite an uncommon princess. She's really not keen on uh, following the fairy tale rules. Um, and instead of, I don't know, waiting for a prince or being rescued, uh, learn all the things that a princess is supposed to be learning, she, she basically um, runs away to find a dragon um, and live with the, with the dragon, basically. This book is supposed to be sort of ironic, um, mocking a little bit of uh, the fairy tales, um, the fairy tale style, and it kind of reminded me in a way of uh, The Princess Bride, which is an adult novel though, and it does that much better. Um, and this is because of this one, being targeted towards middle graders, um, sometimes I, I wasn't, especially at first, I wasn't sure if it was trying to be ironic or very condescending towards the reader. Um, but then, you know, I settled on ironic, this is ironic, um, but it still didn't work that well. Maybe someone that's younger, doesn't really get the irony, which is not a problem, but I don't know, it's, it, it makes it uh, in the style, makes makes the style a little bit simple uh, and a little bit dull, which I guess could be, uh, you know, a problem for, for an adult reader approaching a book for, for children. And maybe children don't really notice that, but at the same time, I feel like children deserve a better writing style, basically. Um, and. Uh, it's not that I did not enjoy these books, they were enjoyable, they were um, fairly quick, but I, you know, they were both three star reads and I'm not sure that I want to keep on with the series, there are two more books in the series and I just want to know if they get any different, um, the tone gets any different, especially because I know that these are sort of filler books that the author actually wrote um, the fourth book, so the last book in the in the quartet, it's the first one that she ever wrote. And then the the editors uh, they asked the author to write more about the characters, so she had to come up with a with a with a story that was previous uh, to the you know to the events that supposedly are taking place in the fourth one. So a part of me is curious to check out the fourth one and see if that's any different in the style or tone or even, you know, in, in terms of character's arc. Um, but at the same time, I don't really want to read two more books to give three stars to and then get rid of the whole series. So let me know if you read this one and what you thought of it. And if I should keep going, um, considering that I'm not really loving them that much. Then I read the ebook for Sexographies by Gab Gabriela Wiener. Um, and this was translated from the Spanish by um, Jennifer Adcock and Lucy Greaves. And so, <laughs> I hope I don't talk too much about this book because I feel like I don't want to talk too much about books I didn't like, but at the same time I feel like I have stronger opinions on books I didn't like. So, the author is Peruvian and this was my pick for Peru for uh, the Invisible Cities project. I don't remember which month we were supposed to be reading Peruvian uh, books, but yes, I just finished this in May and I know I was not on track. Um, but anyway, this is an essay collection, so it's, uh, it's a non-fiction uh, book 
and the essays are supposed to be um, about the author's sexual experiences, I guess mostly um, given the title as well, but actually there are some essays that have nothing to do with that and they don't really fit in. It's not that I, you know they're supposed to be all sexual, but at the same time I didn't really see the connection between these spare essays that just were thrown in. It, I wouldn't call this a memoir because it's yeah it's too specific as a, as a you know, it, it, it has a very specific theme running throughout but at the same time some of the I, I was confused and um, I previously talked about this book before in a video and I was saying how I was really loving it and I had read only the first two essays and the first essay to me is still my favorite uh, it was very good interesting quirky um, and the second one I have to say I was a bit taken aback by because again it's one of those essays that don't really fit because it, it talks about her going in the, into this prison she's a journalist and most of this the stuff that she writes about it's things that she experienced because she had to write something about it so it felt sometimes a bit forced um, not that she wasn't brave but it was just I didn't see really the point um, although one could argue maybe that the point is the art, you know, the point is talking about these things, I don't know. Um, but anyway, there, was, there, there were some of these essays that, like, there was one about her interviewing um, Isabel Allende, which, you know, it, it was interesting, but again, I don't know how it fit the collection. And another one about motherhood that I actually kind of enjoyed, which is which was towards the end, but I actually actively really disliked this book. I disliked the author mostly, which I feel bad uh, saying this, but that's the truth. It's just that I really, she really annoyed me. Her personality really annoyed me and I kept going because I just wanted her to redeem herself a little bit and she did actually a little bit at the end because the motherhood essay was towards the end and I really appreciated that. But throughout the entire collection, I just was more and more annoyed with her attitude, with her choices, and I couldn't really understand. Um, she was very, very pretentious in what she did and just very, uh, she was bragging a lot. Even in the, um, the essay about uh, interviewing Isabel Allende, she's very, yeah very pretentious and I didn't like that and there was a um, an essay in particular on on basically trans uh, people trans sex workers that was an absolute mess and uh, it was just so bad so bad um, that I had to double check when this book was written because not that I would uh, you know excuse the author uh, if it was written a long time ago, but still I would understand maybe a little bit better the context, but it was not that old. Uh, actually, when she's talking about Isabel Allende, she's talking, she's referring to the fact that they are in 2012. So, I mean, arguably 2012 is a, a long time ago, but not that long. And so this uh, essay about trans people was so offensive and plus she so basically in this essay she um, decided to have an experience and see uh, the life or you know how these sex workers actually worked um, so she goes with a friend of hers um, a trans woman and they go together with the car in this place and actually at the time she was breastfeeding her uh, baby her three months old baby that she left home with, with someone um, and so what happened is that she was trying to gross the reader out by saying that her boobs were full of milk and she had to express milk um, and she was leaking milk or something and that's supposed to be like ew that's ugh, um, disgusting while she was going on this adventure and it's just a stupid thing to do because first of all I wouldn't leave my three month old to go uh, and do something like that but of course it's her job so it makes sense but at the same time it's just natural that you're leaking um, milk and if you if you're someone that has breastfed 
a, a baby or that is familiar with how breastfeeding works, it's, that's just natural and it's not something that's, that's supposed to be gross in any way. Um, and aside from that, she just, the comments that she made on trans people were just of offensive and I just want to read you a bit of, of this essay. At only 5 feet 2 and with my moderate proportions, I feel invisible among all these tattooesque women. I wonder what a world without cisgender women would be like. Trans women sometimes seem the projection of what men think women should be, which is why heterosexual men like trans women so much. In these times, they're the closest they'll get to their feminine ideal. I mean, no. No. So wrong. Okay. Mo let's move on. Another ebook that I actually really, really enjoyed was Passing by Nella Larsen. And this is a classic, basically, from the Harlem uh, Renaissance. And it was a, such a gem of a book. It's more of a novella because it's very short, but it, it was very engaging. And I, I couldn't get my, uh, my eyes off this book. Just everything about this is brilliant. The depiction of, of the places, the description of characters, the characters' development, um, yeah, it was just really good, like extremely good. And uh, this is the story of, I think uh, this book has been talked about a lot lately on booktube, but this is about basically two black women, um, both of them are very light-skinned and they could both pass for white, um, and they were friends, childhood friends, and they actually, they meet again after a long time and one of them she's passing for white um, she's married a white man that's very also racist um, and the other woman she she's she stays she's in the black community and she married a black man um, and they both have children and they meet and they just they have a very weird uh, relationship because there's a lot of tension that could also be like sexual, but it's it's um, about class a lot, about the race uh, and their identity and how the concept of passing affects them uh, differently, basically. And it was such a fascinating concept that I never read anything about um, and made me want to check out The, the Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, which is supposed to be actually taken from, from this one. I mean, I don't know if it's a retelling or just it took inspiration from this classic, but it has, you know, the, the comparison has been made. And I actually have um, another book by Britt Bennett. I have The Mothers that I wanted to read first, but now I don't know because I'm very curious to check out The Vanishing Half and see how it compares to this one. This one was so good and I definitely recommend it. And I also saw that there's supposed to be a movie or a TV series um, on Netflix about this, which I cannot wait to check out. So I don't know if it's out yet, I don't think so. Not in Italy anyway. So yeah, definitely recommend this one. Then I listened to the um, audiobook for The ADHD Advantage by Dale Archer. And this was just okay. Um, it was very much focused on, on success stories and how, you know, ADHD could be your your superpower and it's a concept that I you know can stand by is that the right frazzle verb I don't know um, but at the same time is a bit reductive I don't know if I'm speaking English correctly today guys um, but yes I feel like it's it, it's not the whole picture you know it's just a, a side of it um, I'm, I'm agree I agree that you're supposed to be focusing on the positive sides of how you are, but at the same time, again, this was just not enough to me for me. Um, and also, it, the the author is very much against medication, which is not something. I mean, I'm not medicated for for my ADHD, and I don't plan to be as for now because I'm in a very good place right now. But at the same time, I wouldn't stigmatize so much the use of medication, especially for people that you know actually really need it. Um, and I mean, it doesn't say that, that it's wrong, and I agree that some, some um, sometimes uh, doctors tend to over, you know, medicate people, and especially children, um, and that could be harmful because you don't even know, you know, how in the long run this is gonna affect your body and your your brain. 
but anyway, yes, I did not really like the tone of it. Um, and also all the success stories basically were males. I mean, there were some females in this, but I felt like it was very male oriented and it's very different because expectations, you know, society expectations are different um, towards men and women, um, especially even in a, in a neuroatypical lens. And that's why afterwards I picked up a book that's targeted towards women with ADHD that I'm really enjoying. But, but anyway, yes, the only thing that I could, you know, take home with me um, with this book was how he was talking about sports and how some sports are more um, in tune with an ADHD brain. And I felt like I was, that was exactly my case because he said that how um, sports that are very much concentrated on your body uh, moving, such as uh, dance, dancing, ballet, which I did for, I think, 14 years or something, um, and also martial arts, and that made me, made me smile because I felt like I, I was, since I danced for that long and then I started um, doing Muay Thai, I thought these two, two things have nothing in common. What am I even doing? But actually it makes sense in, a, in an ADHD lens uh, because martial arts and just dancing are perfect for, for your brain. Um, and you know, uh, Muay Thai to me was amazing because it was the only time in my life that it could switch off my brain, which doesn't ever happen. Um, and so yeah, I thought that was, you know, uh, a nice thing to to learn. Then I finished this book about vaccines um, that this uh, pediatrician, this Spanish pediatrician wrote. He's Carlos Gonzalez and I don't know how to translate this one, uh, but yes, I'm, I won't talk about this one. It was very dense, but it was very well written. It's a bit old-ish, so probably if you wrote this book now, you would have had more information to uh, to add but uh, basically this is just a book that um, dismantles all the beliefs that um, anti-vaxxers have and especially he targets a book in particular which was uh, published in Spain so I don't know the book he's talking about but all his points are very valid and make sense and especially in this sort of period where we're talking a lot about vaccines, I felt like this one was very apt and I, yes, I ended up really enjoying this one, although it took me a year to read, but yes, what can you do? Lastly, I read um, Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. I really enjoyed this series, it's very fun and lighthearted, and although this volume actually is a bit more it's a bit darker, I would say, because it delves into one of the characters' eating disorder problems, um, and it's very much focused on that. Um, the but but yes, still, it's a very nice and very just fun story to to read. It's about these two young boys in high school that fall in love. One of them is openly gay and the other one is not and but they become friends they fall in love they have uh, around them their you know group of friends that also ha are very interesting and their families as well so it's a it's a very inclusive story and a very fun one i feel like i don't really read um romance and i don't really read ya and this thing this book is both of them but being a graphic novel i feel like it's different because i do enjoy even tv shows about teen dramas and romances i really enjoy that and i don't know why i don't like ya books really i tried but i just cannot and this also feels sort of like a tv show and i'm so happy that a tv show is actually coming out i don't know when but they're filming it right now um i'm very excited for that like extremely excited and also the next volume is going to be the last one. That's what the author said anyway. Um, and I also appreciated the art in this one. I mean, they, um, I said before how this is very sketchy and I don't really like um, drawings that are not really detailed, but I felt like this one was much more curated, but maybe it was just me getting used to the, um, the art style. But I felt like, yes, I really enjoyed the, the art in this one more than in the other, you know, the previous three. Although this is not my favorite volume so far. I don't know which one would be. But yeah, anyway, I really enjoyed it. They're very fun, they're very quick. Uh, so I definitely recommend you check these out if they sound like something that you would enjoy. 
And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video and please talk to me in the comments down below as usual and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!